Hey everyone, Jessica Kubasi here. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a blurred background portrait effect. And I wanted to show you guys my personal take on it. It's really easy to do. I'm going to go through it step by step and try to explain it as simply as possible. So the first thing that you want to do is I like to duplicate my background just because if I make a mistake, you know, the original is still there. So what you want to do is press Command J if you're using Mac and it's going to create another layer. So right now what we want to do is separate the model from the background because we want to blur the background. Now what we're going to do is go on over to the quick selection tool because we're lazy and what you want to do is just shorten the selection process. You don't want to be over here selecting everything by hand. Pen tool, you know, wand, magic wand. You don't want to just, the, it's here for a reason. So let's just quickly select whatever we can. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is going to really save us like 20 years. So let this little wand, you know, let him be a little bit effective at his job. Let him, let him do his job. So all I'm doing is just selecting the model using this wand. Now, as you can see, when I'm selecting it, a little bit of the selection is going to reach further out. Don't freak out. Don't have a panic attack. It's, it's, we're going to fix this in just a moment. So what you see is I'm reaching a little bit over some parts and I will show him zooming in and you can see around the hair. I ruined it, right? So the trick is to press Q on your keyboard, the letter Q, and what it's going to do is show you the actual selection that you make. Now the thing that I like about this quick mask is that you can color in and change the entire selection. So basically it, it turns into a different mode. And what you can do now is use the brush tool. So I'm going to you, you know, pull that brush tool out and you know bump up the hardness just a tiny bit and what I can do now is using a white color make sure the color selected is white wait I'm sorry oh I'm sorry you want to up the opacity that's important also so that it shows and instead of white I'm sorry you want to use black <sighs> opacity man you're embarrassing me in this tutorial <laughs> okay yeah, always make sure your opacity is at 100% because it's at, if it's at 10%, it's not going to show and you're going to want to quit doing this. So using the black foreground color and a regular paintbrush, just go ahead and color in any area you also want to be blurry. So we're coloring the background. So the background will be in, in red. And do not worry if you're, you're coloring over hair and you're not getting all the little hair pieces. I'm gonna show you a way that I combat that. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so let me just do that real quick. By the way, if you do happen to mess up, all you have to do is just press X on your keyboard and you can switch colors to erase and add. That is if you make a mistake. Now what we are going to do is, I'm gonna, I just zoomed out so um, you see the selection here and what I want to do is press Q on my keyboard again. And what that's going to do is revert back to this little selection scene. Now, what I'm going to do next is very important. Um, well, first I want to invert this mask because I don't want her to be selected. I want the background to be selected. So I'm going to press Command Shift I. So that's basically just inverting the mask. Next thing I want to do which is very important, this is the important part. Select, save selection. This is going to save you a lot of tears, okay? So let's just, selection, guys, I don't know, hey, everybody. Okay, so this is gonna be the, the selection. So, let, this is why I did this, okay? Let's say accidentally I deselect it, and then you, I just forget something. I don't know. I need something happens, okay? What you can do is go to select, load selection, go to channel, and then there's the selection. And then you press okay. 
and it's back again. So if you wanted to even make more selections, you want to select this leaf, you can do that. So it just gives you that option. It's like a, it's like a ra life raft, you know what I mean? Like Titanic. Okay, bad analogy. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Let's get back to business. So what I want to do now is go on over to Filter, Blur, Tilt, Shift. And I like this because it looks... It, it looks, it has the best effect out of all the other blurs that I've tried. So what I'm going to do now is I want this entire background to be blurry and then kind of gradually fade out. So what you want to do is okay, pull this thing, make sure this little thumbtack guy is up here. You want to drag it all the way down. And what you want to do is lift this part up to start the transition. So if you wanted to start fading out around this area, then just drop this guy down. Just make sure this, the two arrows are, um, are present. So you can control the blur, obviously, by just, you know, this little selection right here. Depending on how you're feeling, I guess, you can change that. And I think that looks pretty good. I don't want it be, to be too much, obviously, even though this whole thing is fake. But we want to keep it a little bit natural, thinking that looks pretty good. And you can try these other blurs. There's field blur, iris blur. But I'm going to use just a tilt shift for it now. And I'm going to press Enter. And deselecting. And there it is. Wow. Look, it's... Photoshop. So remember when I told you guys about the hair? If this hair, see how it looks like crispy over here? What you want to do is take your smudge tool right here and just go over the hair, kind of have it blend out. Of course, this is not ideal for like if this is going to be like someone's music video thumbnail. I mean, you want it to be a little bit nicer than using this smudge tool, but you know, it's, it works, it works. Um, I was never really good at selecting hair, so this is just a technique that I found to be useful to me. I don't have time to sit and pick each individual hair out. It still looks natural and yeah, I find this to work out for me. Um, not to say that you can, you know, look up the tutorial on how to select hair, because you can definitely do that. I'm, for the perf purpose of this tutorial and the timing, I don't want to make it 50 minutes, so I'm just showing you guys quickly how I would select the model. So this is looking pretty good. Um, if you wanted to add any sort of colors, make it look even fancier, you can go on over to Curves and just have fun with it. Here it is, as much fun as you can have doing this on a, on a, on a Friday night. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that, though. I love doing this. This is, like, fun to me. I'm just making very subtle changes right now. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. And then I want to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then Gradient Map, just to add a little bit of color. I'm using an orange to yellow. Going from normal to, let's try soft light. You can always, for gradient maps, I like to do overlay or soft light. I never really use hard light. It just gives it a little bit of color. You don't want to do this, okay? It's going to look like the sun is really close to the earth. <laughs> but that's looking pretty good. And also another thing you could do is make a new layer and go on over to your brush tool. Make sure it's 0% hardness. And I'm gonna make sure this is a huge brush. And I'm going over to the color picker and selecting a yellow greenish type color. Now you could use a gradient fill for this, but this is funner. So lowering the opacity to about 33 and I'm just gonna add in some colors and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. If you go from normal to screen, 
you can see it gives it a little pop of color and you can also change it from screen to overlay or if you prefer soft light. Those are my favorite layers to use. Back in my web design days, I used screen a lot, but I'm kind of liking this overlay, how this overlay looks right now. Like, look how nice that looks already. And I think that, you know, concludes this tutorial. Let me show you guys a quick before and after. This is before and this is after. So I really hope you guys like this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please let me know. Thank you for watching.